A major project in Smith's Point has been stopped, reviewed, but not cancelled by the government. We have the latest. Taxi Union President says enough is enough as a controversy is brewing within the transportation industry. And Cuban migrants rescued at sea are now in the hands of immigration officials. Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shashina Rule. As always, it is so great to have you with us. So, having news this evening, a multi million dollar project on Grand Bahama has been halted and the contract terminated. It was expected to be a major improvement for the Smith Point community as work commenced on a seawall to combat coastal erosion late last year. But tonight, the mega development is on hold as a parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Works is reporting that several issues have come about with that project. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works, Iram Lewis, led a team from that ministry on a tour of the Smith's Point Seawall project on Sunday afternoon. Last year, a multi-million dollar contract was awarded to Smith's construction company for a 1,733-foot concrete seawall to combat the issue of coastal erosion in the area. However, according to Lewis, that contract had to be cancelled this past Thursday for several reasons, including missed deadlines. The contract was signed, as we made understand, on the 24th of June, 2016, with a 26-week um, construction schedule. There were consideration given to Hurricane Matthew, consideration given to the Christmas break weekend, etc. So an adjustment was made um, to the actual um, commencement of the project. A revised schedule was subsequently submitted um, advising that the construction would be completed by May 17th. The parliamentary secretary adds that it was important for the company to meet those deadlines. It was to mitigate against any damage being happening to the community during hurricane season and right now we are in the middle of a hurricane season so this entire community is exposed so we have to now take mitigating action to ensure that in the event that there is a, a, a tidal surge, the community is, is protected. Lewis says another issue was the materials and methods that were being used to construct the seawall. The main material used was concrete and the, the method that was used, the, the testing lab um, did not certify the tests based on the compressive and the tensile strength. It wasn't meeting the, the required specification and notices were given to the contractor to, to correct those. And um, it happened on several occasions where it was not done um, in a timely manner. Also the method of getting the, the, the cement to site. Um, the pour must be done and, and put in situ immediately to avoid it setting prior to, to it being placed. But some residents are not too happy with the fact that this project has been stopped. There's this gaping trench here with water in the trench. There are kids in this neighborhood and our kids can't have access to the beach. We understand that because the project is ongoing. But now there's no security out here from this project was, was, was stopped. We don't know what, what is the reason why. And uh, Because like we say, there was some con uh, a frustration in this neighborhood where the seawall is concerned. But we finally kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Hurricane season is upon us. Every day this seawall is not uh, being worked on. That's a serious, serious concern, a serious issue. The parliamentary secretary addressed those concerns, noting that the work will commence as soon as possible, adding that the safety of residents in the area is their top priority. This project, based on our evaluation at the last point, is um, well under 40%, in fact, 35% completed. Um, so perhaps the residents has been misinformed, and it depends on who the information is coming from. Site safety for the construction workers and for the general public is paramount. In addition to security officers being on site, we must have site sign, proper sign that must be lit at night to ensure that persons are aware of all the dangers during the daytime and at night. Um, of course, you know you're going to get a political twist on it, but I'm, I'm sure we had PLPs, FNM, DNAs, UDPs, and all Bahamians working on the site. So this is not a, a political move, and we're not concerned about political colors right now. We're concerned about Bahamians, and we are here to protect Bahamians. Now, a town meeting on this issue will take place at 6 p.m. on Friday evening. President of the Grand Bahama Taxi Union taking a local resort to task over an ongoing issue which he says is another example of unfair treatment against taxi drivers on Grand Bahama. Italia Hall reports. 
This company feels they can do whatever they want to do and disrespect the laws of the Bahamas. President of the Grand Bahama Taxi Union, David Jones, says he believes that the transportation laws have been breached by the Ocean Reef Yacht Club and Resort, which is located on Bahama Reef Boulevard in Lakaya. The union president adds that he has made several calls, met with management, and to date, nothing has been resolved. We have a private citizen on the resort acting as a taxi service or a tour operator. They are receiving monies from guests and they want to put them in taxis or in cars, whatever they want to do. Again, that is against the law. If a guest decides to take a transportation, uh, a paying transportation, it automatically goes in taxis. Taxis are the only regulators that are supposed to collect uh, guests, uh, monies from the guests. Now, June says enough is enough. This has been an existing problem for over a year now. And if nothing is done by today, immediate action will follow. We're telling the authorities, deal with it today or elsewise. We're going to block up the soul street. I got 600 drivers ready now because the economy is bad. Things are tough. And everybody wants to get in the transportation business. When you met with the owners of this property, what, what, what was their response? The idea is they want to do what is fair, but at the end of the day, it's only talk. So again, I'm at our wit's end. My members are telling me all I'm doing is just talking. That's all, that's all they tell me. They tell me, oh, we, we try to be the only citizens who say we love the bombers. So we're we going to try to behave in a uh, decent manner. But honestly, decency is out the window. Our ZNS News team tried to reach out to the property managers who refused to give a comment at this time. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Natalia Hall. Switching gears now, a group of illegal immigrants rescued at sea are now in the custody of Bahamas Immigration. Reports say that on Saturday at 5 p.m., the U.S. CG cutter William Trump called into the Lacayan Harbor and handed over to Bahamas Immigration officials nine Cuban migrants. The migrants reportedly left Villa Clara, Cuba on Sunday, May 28th, some 12 days ago, in a rustic vessel destined for the United States. However, their vessel developed problems forcing them to seek harbor on a key in the Keysau Bank. Now, the migrants remained on that key until being rescued by U.S. CG officials on Friday who transported the men to Freeport. After taking the migrants into custody, Bahamas immigration officials transported them to immigration headquarters for further processing and to be medically examined by the medical team from the Surveillance and Infectious Disease Unit of PHA. Now, those immigrants are expected to be flown to Nassau to be detained at the detention center until repatriated to Cuba. Stay with us. There's more news right after this.